Welcome to part 3 of this video tutorial series about QTimer. And now we're going to learn more about this QList. And this is where you plan the show. We start with all the options we have for timers. And when you open the program for the first time, it will look empty like this. At first, I just want to create an empty timer with the default settings. Because in QTimer, you can choose where you want to edit the timer. You can both do it in the new timer menu, or you can do it in the QList. So let's just start this here and we go from the left column and we explain everything. So the ID is something that is mostly used for triggering. You can trigger the timers from external software and hardware like uh, QLab and uh, Companion. And we're going to cover all this in a later video. Uh, the name and description is the name that will be shown in the counter monitor. And it's also useful for the operator to see uh, where we are in the show. And the timer type, we have different types of uh, timers, depending on what you want. For the countdown, the timer will count down from the duration time set here in the duration. The start time has a couple of purposes. First, it can be useful to have the start time in the queue list so that the operator can see when the timer is scheduled to start according to the schedule from the organizer. And if you are using the web schedule, then these start times will also be shown here. And we'll learn more about this in a future video, but as you can see, it makes a nice schedule for remote speakers and other crew members. And we have something called auto start that will force the timer to start at the time set in the start cell. So let's see here, now the time is uh, this and we try to set up a value that uh, will trigger this uh, start time. And when you put auto on, we will see that this color changes to red. And that means it's uh, loaded and ready to trigger once this... Oh, that, there it went. Now it just went past uh, this time, as you can see here in the Windows clock. And then we have the warning. And it's easier if I just fire the timer and you will see what happens. Now the duration is set at 4 seconds and the warning is at 2 seconds. So you can see when the timer reaches below two seconds, it gets yellow. And this can be useful to notify the speaker that the time is running out. Here we can set different options for what will happen to the timer when it's ended. The end column lets you change the end time. And by adding minutes here, the whole duration of the countdown will be longer. And then in the end, we have the timer, which is basically the same as it's shown in this window. And we cannot edit this in this version. The speed is going to change the speed of the counter, just like this buttons here that we showed in the earlier video. But in QTimer, you can also change the speed of future timers. And this can be useful if, let us say, that uh, you are running late in the rundown and you want all the speakers to spend less time, but you don't want them to notice it. Then if you increase the speed, you know, everything with 10%, then you can see the duration. It's getting less, so they spend less time. But when you fire their timers, they will always start from 10. So it's a little trick you can use to alter how much time the counter is using. But uh, as always, be careful with this feature because you can get in trouble if, this, if you don't uh, tell the speaker about this in advance. Until now, we only dealt with the countdown timer type, but we also have different types you can set here. Uh, the end time will count down until the time set here. Let us say we have a countdown that we want to end exactly at 12.40. Then we set it like this. And when we start the timer, it will count down so that when it ends, it's exactly at 12.40. And then we have the count up, which will just start from zero. The 
the clock timer will just display the clock. And this is the same as the Windows clock. And we have something called empty timers, which will just display nothing. To the right here, we have the edit controls. And you select a timer for edit by mouse clicking it. And you can see here the blue color, it marks that it's available for edits. And you can select multiple timers by shift clicking like this. And now you can do operations like uh, delete the timers, copy and paste. And we already drew this new timer. This set next button will change the assignment of the next timer. So let us say that John is speaking and Jane is sick. Now we can go to June, push the set next, and now she will be the next to start. And a quick way to do the same is just to push the Alt key while you are pushing the timer. So now I can freely set the assignment of the next timer. This reset key will remove countdowns that are running but not shown in the monitor. It will clear the surface. So to move the timers, we do this with the mouse and drag and drop. We select the timer we want to move with the mouse, hold the mouse key down, and uh, with the red line shows where the timer will end up. Select multiple timers by holding one timer, then shift key the next, and you can move them freely. From the file tab, you can export and import this list. Okay, so I think that's what you need to know about uh, this queue list and uh, how we can change the plan for the event. And in the next video, we'll learn more about these windows and how we can customize how it looks. So have fun and see you again soon.